Welcome, dear friends in Christ, to today's Gospel Reflection taken from Matthew chapter 7, verses 21, 24 to 27. All of us have a set of assumed beliefs. That is what we think we believe. And then we have our real beliefs, those that are revealed through our behavior. A person can say, I believe in always being honest, that is who I truly am at my core. But then a tough situation presents itself and this very individual may just lie in order to gain an advantage. Their real core value is not then about being honest, but something else. Many of us go about making very strong statements. Um, you know, there are people who have very strong beliefs, very strong viewpoints on things like social justice, equality, and even on spirituality. The challenge, however, lies in aligning these very beliefs with that of our behaviors. The behaviors that are seen in our daily lives. Today's gospel seems to highlight this very issue and is seen articulated by Jesus Christ. The first section, verse 21, addresses a very specific issue. Verses 24 to 27, seen in the second section, serves as a conclusion to the Sermon on the Mount. In verse 21, Jesus offers a very strong statement which reads, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. This is truly a great example of the current gap that exists between one person saying one thing but then doing something completely different. The statement is one that further sharpens the discussion regarding who is truly a disciple of Jesus Christ. Not all who affirm that Jesus is the risen Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven on that future day. It is only those who actually do the will of God who will be permitted entry. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? As found in the epistle of James, we read, Faith without works is dead. For Jesus, the way in which one lives out his or her life demonstrates if someone is truly his disciple. It's not really the words that one says, but it's the actions, it's one's behavior. To be a follower of Jesus means that their behaviors, their actions should truly be a reflection of their inner faith. So even if we go about doing many things that we consider and we believe are good, but in essence are displeasing to our Abba Father, then everything that we are doing is in vain. So how do we know what God really wants? How do we know the will of God? God created us to know Him, to love Him, to serve Him, to praise Him, to glorify Him. And so in order for us to achieve this, we must first begin by loving the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind, and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Anything that we try to do without love for God and for our neighbors will 
just be a waste of time. We are told that Jesus will deny us. Most of us tend to use the name of the Lord our God in vain in our conversations in order to, to sound rather righteous in the eyes of other people. But Jesus reminds us yet again that just by mentioning his name, it doesn't guarantee us entry into the kingdom. We have to constantly outreach beyond ourselves. We have to go to God by finding Him present in the world around us, in the people around us, the people that we, that we encounter, and help them become even more aware of that loving presence of God as well. We cannot just do this quietly by calling on God's name while ignoring the needs of other people. To do that would really mean that we built our house on sand. In the second section of the Gospel, Jesus closes the Sermon on the Mount with the story of two people and the houses that they have chosen to build. The first person is like a house that is built on rock. Its foundation is strong, is secure, and is deeply anchored in Christ. It is so strong that it can withstand the attack of the enemy. The second is like a house that is built on sand. One that is weak, that is unstable, and eventually and unfortunately will be destroyed by the storm. What a beautiful, powerful metaphor. Two people and two different responses to Christ's same message. This message is actually rather quite clear. Discipleship occurs in the everyday practices of Jesus' followers. Jesus invites all of us to an encounter with God. He offers us a different life to live, a different way of living. Our deep faith in God will see us through life's toughest adversities, toughest of situations, and no matter how tough and, and you know, no matter the calamities that life presents us, if we remain deeply rooted in God, and if we do not lose hope, if our faith is anchored on solid rock, then nothing can destroy us. So is your house of faith one that is solidly anchored in a rock that is Jesus Christ, or is it planted or built in sand? Let our love and the glory of God be manifested uh, through our actions during this Advent season and not merely in empty words. I invite you to, to close your eyes in prayer as we close this reflection. Dear Lord Jesus, help us to put our words about your love into action. Help us demonstrate through our behaviors, through our actions, the love that we have for you and for the people around us. May our actions always speak louder than our words. And during this Advent season, may we continue to grow deeply in love with you, to seek and to serve you. Amen. Have a beautiful blessed, prayerful Advent season.